Do you recognize this statue? You've probably seen it if you've ever visited or driven past the Marathon County Courthouse in Wausau, Wisconsin. Although it was moved a few blocks from its original location when the current courthouse was built in the mid-1950s, the statue still stands on the east side of the building, now along 6th Street. It's called the Cutler Post Memorial Statue, and it was dedicated back in 1889 by the local chapter of the Grand Army of the Republic. But while it was paid for and built by the local Civil War veterans, during the war itself, Marathon County did not send a company to fight in the army. In the early 1860s, there just wasn't enough population here to support a militia company. Certainly, there were a few dozen individuals from the area who did go on to enlist and serve during the war, but the majority of the Civil War veterans who ended up living here came here after the war from someplace else, and they were not residents of the county before the conflict broke out. But by the mid-1870s, the population of the county was growing, and certainly many of the veterans who moved here after the war brought their belief that a community like Wassa, for example, as the county seat and largest city in the area, they should have a militia company. The Germania Guard was formed in 1875 and was named in honor of the immigrants who made up the majority of the volunteers. And in 1882, another militia company, the Wassa Light Guards, was also formed in the city. It's also worth noting, too, that there was a third, if short-lived, Marathon County Company formed in Unity in 1880. Just like the National Guard today, members of these companies in the 1880s were expected to report for annual training and might be called upon to help respond to natural disasters or to help keep the peace during times of civil upheaval. And of course, in times of war, the companies would be mobilized and given over to the control of the national military for the war effort. In fact, the militia company has been the backbone of the American military since pretty much the beginning. When facing the question of how best to organize a national army after winning its independence from Great Britain, the new United States decided that instead of creating a large standing army of the sort you typically saw in Europe, the American military would instead draw its fighting men mostly from these decentralized militia companies. After all, now that the nation had its independence, we would not be getting involved in protracted land wars abroad. And for the most part, at least the thought at the time was, the American soldiers could just protect their own homes by operating on a local or regional level. So, for the most of the 19th century then, the fighting men of the United States overwhelmingly came from these local militia companies, at least during peacetime. And they were organized under the authority of the state governments that they were part of. In 1879, the militia companies of Wisconsin were reorganized into what was then considered the modern regimental system and placed under the administration of the newly formed Wisconsin National Guard. This regimental system meant that they took these militia companies and grouped them together into these larger regiments, which would kind of encompass the region that they were from within the state. Sometime around 1883 or 84, the various militia companies were also given letter designations to help keep the units straight within each regiment. So the designation of the two militia companies in Wassa in 1886, which again were the Germania Guard and the Wassa Light Guards, they were known as Company E and Company G, respectively, both within the 3rd Regiment of the Wisconsin National Guard. For the most part, the regiments and the various companies that made them up stayed pretty close to this sort of distribution that you see here. But they didn't end up making occasional adjustments to the system as the population of the state shifted, and as individual militia companies were formed or disbanded depending on the ability of their various communities to support them. And the ability to maintain and equip a group of 50 to 100 men could be a considerable strain on a community. And you can see this in Marathon County with the folding of the Unity Guards in 1882 after less than two years in the Wisconsin National Guard. Similarly, the Germania Guard in Wausau also had pretty significant funding issues that eventually caused it to disband in 1890. So it was a source of considerable pride when a community was able to continually support a militia company for the long haul. And as great as it was having a company in the National Guard for your community, it was even more prestigious if your community was host to a regimental band for the National Guard. Traditionally, funding for each militia would include some kind of music. And the format of this music changed over the years, from the fife and drum of the revolutionary years to more of a pure brass military band in the middle 1800s. 
And while service in the military can have its moments of excitement, it also can be very dull. So having some music, whether that was a full regimental band or maybe just a cornet player who could play taps, that had a big effect on the morale of the soldiers. But while most people agreed that it was worth having a band as part of the militia regiments, it did mean a little bit of extra money to support such a group. And particularly in years of peace, this price was often pretty prohibitive. So rather than recruit and maintain a band themselves, National Guards often elected to find existing commercial groups from whatever city that they were looking at and make that the new regimental band. So, for example, if we look at Wisconsin's 3rd Regimental Band at the start of 1887, it was headquartered in Menominee. Though some of the musicians were from there, a couple came from other places, including their leader, W.H. Clifton, who was living in Chippewa Falls. But in March of 1887, Clifton decided he'd had enough. He sold his saloon, he resigned his commission, and he moved to Duluth, which left the band without a leader. And after a few months of this, the Wisconsin National Guard decided that the Menominee outfit was no longer fit to serve as the regimental band. And so it announced that it would be looking for a new group to fill the post. Many cities throughout Wisconsin put their bands into contention. But in the end, the lucky pole went to Wassa, and a band led by a man named Frank G. Dana. A decade earlier, a young Frank Dana had left his home in Berlin, Wisconsin, to attend school. And in 1879, after finishing his education, he took a job with Mr. Dunbar in Wassa. Although a jeweler by trade and training, he was also a very talented cornet player, and he quickly found a place among the remnants of the old Wassa cornet band, and probably with the new band led by Frank Schubert. But before long, he decided that he wanted to try his hand at leading a group, and that group became known as Frank Dana's Silver Cornet Band. Unlike other band leaders at the time, Dana's group did not operate out of a beer garden, a dance hall, or a saloon. And instead, it became the band for hire across the region. Dana's group might play up in Merrill for a rural church picnic or down in Stevens Point for the fireman's ball. They played in city parades during the summer, at the county fair during the fall, and even for ice skating at the ice skating rink during the winter. And they also had a smaller orchestra, which could be hired out for private dinner parties. And in quick order, Frank Dana's band rose to become the most prominent group in the region, and was popular not only with the public, but also very popular with local musicians as well. And so when the opportunity to become the regimental band emerged, Dana's outfit was one of the clear frontrunners. And as we've seen, in 1887, Dana's group did indeed become the third regimental band of the Wisconsin National Guard. After getting this lucky pull, the group continued to play a lot of the same sort of venues that they had been before, but now they were also being asked to play more prestigious places as well. So, for example, Dana was invited to represent the Wisconsin National Guard at annual conventions of the National GAR on several occasions, in New York, Milwaukee, and Boston. And in 1893, they performed as part of the Columbian Exposition, the World's Fair held in Chicago. The band's prominence also helped to raise the stature of its home, and the people of Wassa were exceedingly proud of Dana and his boys. Until 1894. That year, Dana was approached by the representatives of the city of Appleton, who made flattering overtures to entice him to relocate the band to their city. And apparently, this offer included a guarantee that the city would set aside about $1,000 every year to pay the band for public concerts. Now, this was not the first time that another city had tried to entice the 3rd Regimental Band away from Wassa, but Appleton's money was just too good for Professor Dana to pass up. And so, the 3rd Regimental Band left Wassa for Appleton in 1894. And because Dana was the most prominent band leader in the region, most of the musicians went with him, leaving Wassa once again without a major band of its own. But it's hard to feel too hurt over this betrayal, the Dana leaving Wassa. We know, looking back, that the greener pastures of Appleton turned out to be not quite so green after all. After resettling to Appleton in late 1894, the 3rd Regimental Band played a few of those public concerts. 
only to find that the city of Appleton didn't actually have that money that they were promising. And after a few of these performances in the spring of 1895, Dana told Appleton in no uncertain terms that the band would not play one more note until his musicians got paid. And when this promised funding did not materialize quickly enough, Dana decided to accept a contract from another city. And so, in 1896, Dana and the 3rd Regiment took their services to Marinette. And this is something of a surprise, as Marinette was and would continue to be home to a company in Wisconsin's 2nd Regiment. But apparently, that was fine enough. Dana and the band remained in Marinette for a few years, including the important period during the Spanish-American War. But they remained a pretty hot commodity, and over this time, other cities tried to entice him away. And eventually, the city of La Crosse did manage to entice Dana to relocate. And so the 3rd Regimental Band moved to La Crosse and remained there for about four years between 1904 and 1908. But then, eventually, Dana did take another job that meant relocating elsewhere. This time, he accepted a job as the bandmaster of the Soldiers' Home in Milwaukee. And for the next nine years or so, Dana would direct the Sunday concerts in the park there. This did mean giving up the post as leader of the regimental band, which he had held for the last 24 years. And so, despite the initial hopes in lacrosse that they might find enough musicians and a conductor to take over the band left by Dana, the Wisconsin National Guard disagreed and announced that they would be considering bids from other cities. A dozen different communities from across Wisconsin put forth their bids for consideration, including two bands from Wausau, which we'll talk about in later videos. But after a spirited campaign that included figuring out where the committee was meeting and sending a delegation of about a dozen people to argue their case in person, the Wisconsin National Guard eventually decided to give the honor to the people of Viroqua. Meanwhile, Frank Dana remained in Milwaukee at the Soldiers' Home for about a decade. But in late 1916, the Soldiers' Home in Milwaukee was closed by order of its national board of directors. This was partially due to the declining number of former soldiers being housed there, but it was also at the center of a fierce political fight by Milwaukee prohibitionists, who objected to the number of saloons that had popped up around the home. But whatever the actual reason, the soldiers' home was closed at the end of 1916, and this meant that Frank Dana was out of a job. At this point, Dana was not in the best of health, and so he decided to return to Wausau, where he hoped to retire from music and enjoy his time left with family and friends. At least, that's what he told the newspapers when he arrived back in town. But by the fall of 1917, he had been talked into putting a band together for the county fair. And in 1918, he would again take up the military baton to lead a Wassa band being formed for the Wisconsin State Guard during the height of the First World War. And in 1919, when Frank Dana died due to lingering heart problems, he left this world as he lived most of his life in military uniform, at the head of a band. Eventually, we will talk about this Wisconsin State Guard band that Dana died while leading during World War I. But next time, we will stay in Marathon County to see how it recovered from Dana's 1894 departure, including looking at another military band formed for the Spanish-American War by the eminent band leader, Clive Sterling Cone.